Islam Islam the universal religion Islam the universal religion Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin was salatu was salam ala sayyidil anbiya wal mursalin sayyidina wa maulana muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd fa a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim as salatu was salam alayka ya rasulullah as salatu was salam alayka ya habiballah as salatu was salam alayka ya nabiyallah wa ala alika wa ashabika ya nurullah rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul 'uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli allahumma iftah alayna hikmataka wa anshur alayna rahmataka ya dhal jalali wal ikram o oh allah azza wa jal open the doors of knowledge and wisdom for us have mercy on us o oh, the one who is the most honorable the most gracious thumma alhamdulillah Yes, dear viewers of Madini Channel, marhaba, ahlan wa sahlan bikum to all our viewers and listeners of Madini Channel. You are watching this program, Islam, the Universal Religion. Alhamdulillah, today our discussion is death and are we prepared? A very important subject and topic as you can see and know. It is one reality that every person will be faced with. It is one hakikat that you and I will be transferred to another world called alam barzakh Stay tuned with us, inshallah, from now till the end of our episode. Let's listen to the virtues and blessings of Durudi Pak as the Prophet of Rahmah, the intercessor of the Ummah, the owner of Jannah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, has stated, the one who recites a thousand times Durud upon me daily, he will not die until Allah will show him his abode in Jannah. Kya baat hai ki. So subhanallah, from this narration we learn that due to the virtues and blessings which are enormous and beyond our imagination, a person who recites a thousand darood upon Rasul Kareem, Ra'uf al-Rahim sallallahu alayhi wa sallama, ultimately the reward and thawab for that is that he will not die until Allah will show that person whilst he is living his abode in paradise. Allah Akbar. This is honestly a bargain. This is honestly a great virtue and blessing of reciting the Rudi Park. If anyone after this misses out on this special, on this beautiful virtue that we have just heard out now, then it is our loss, dear viewers of Madani Channel. It is our shortcomings and our heedlessness uh, for which we are deprived of these amazing blessings which are prepared only for those who excessively and abundantly without wasting their time recite the Rood. Salutations and salams upon Nabi Kareem Rauf Rahim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah, Zawajalla, after we have heard that, and uh, as per routine, we have kalams which we listen to. And in today's episode and program, we are going to be listening to a very beautiful qasida. And that is known as qasida Burda Sharif, mashallah, uh, which is a very famous qasida and recited worldwide. Allama Maulana Sharfuddin Bosiri rahmatullahi ta'ala is the author of this qasida and he was also cured because of Durudi Pak Jiha when he had composed this beautiful qasida Mawlaya Salli wa Sallim Daiman Abadan Ala Habibika Khairi Khalki Kullihimi at that time he was affected with falish that is to say stroke he had paralysis and due to which he could not work and after going or undergoing long-term treatments by different hakims and doctors and no one could do anything for him. At the end, he had then composed this beautiful plea in the court of Allah using the wasila of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aap uske ashaar dekhe na sunne, Ya Rabbi bil Mustafa, balligh maqasidana, waqfil lana, ma'am Allah, ya wasi'al karami, Allahu Akbar. He goes on and Beautiful ashaar and couplets in this beautiful qasida, views of Madani channel. He composed this when he slept at night. His fortune had smiled at him for the Holy Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam blessed him in his dream and passed his affectionate hands over his affected body. Furthermore, blessed him with his burda, with his shawl in the dream. 
And when he opened his eyes, he says, I found myself cured. Prior to that, I was unable to move. I underwent long-term treatments, fed up and totally tired of those treatments for which I received no cure. Here, the healer of all healers, the one who listens to the plea of his followers, came in my dream and passed his affectionate hands over my affected body. And then I realized I was able to walk as normal, as if nothing happened. And furthermore, when I opened my eyes, I could receive the fragrance of the most fragrant personality, our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And together with that, I was covered with the shawl that I admired in my dream. That was the chadar and the shawl of the Holy Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallama. Dear viewers of Mother Nation, it's called Qasida Burda for the same reason. Subhanallah for the Holy Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallama blessed Allama Maulana Muhammad Sharfuddin Bosidi rahmatullahi with his shawl in his dream. Bacha, bacha isi padta hai. Chale, inshallah, be ready. Let's listen to some couplets of this, inshallah. Please stay tuned with us from now till the end of our episode. And here we go. The one who has recited this is none other than Rukne Shura. Haji Abdul Habib Attari. Damad Barakatuhul Aliya. Sunne ke saadat hasil karte hai. And when we do return, we will continue with our discussion. Stay tuned with Madani Channel. Sallu ala al Habib, sallallahu ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Thank 
کیا بات ہے مدینے کی کیا انداز ہے واٹ اے بیوٹیفل اینڈ یونیک وے آف آور رسپیکٹڈ حاجی حبیب صاحب قبلا ماشاء اللہ ہی ریسائٹ دس قصیدہ قصیدہ بردا مولا یا صلی وسلم دا امن ابدا علا حبیبی کا خیری خلق کل ہی میں انفیکٹ سم اسکالرز ہیو ریٹن دیٹ ایون وین یو میک دعا دعا کے لیے جب ہاتھ اٹھائیں تو اس قصیدے کا اگر کوئی اشعار یاد ہو تو پڑھنا چاہیے ون شوڈ ریسائٹ دیز کپلٹس ان ہز دعا بیکاز یہ مقبول بارگاہ رسالت ہے اٹ از موسٹ ڈیفینیٹلی ایکسیپٹیڈ ان دا کارٹ آف رسول کریم رعف الرحیم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سو وین ایور یو میک دعا ٹرائی ٹو ایڈ ون ٹو کپلٹس آف دس قصیدہ ان یور دعا ایز آئی سیڈ اٹ از اے منا جات اٹ از اے پلی ان دا کارٹ آف اللہ ضلع یوزنگ دا میڈیم اینڈ دا وسیلہ of Rasul-i Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam panjatane paak Allahu Akbar <coughs> and uh, very heart-touching couplets are included in this qasida however dear viewers of Madani channel in this qasida Rasul-i Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam shafaat is sought as well Allahu Akbar un ki shafaat qiyamat ke din hume mil jaye bas ye ki dunya mein saath mil jaye dunya mein hume qurb mil jaye hai hai if we can attain his closeness and proximity in this world then most definitely in the hereafter you will find yourself to be closer to the beloved rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam they came the truth of the matter dear viewers of madinah channel is that if you focus on the ahadith of our beloved nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam a very important hadith with regards to why have you and i been created and what is our maqsad and mission in this world and what do we have to do here in order to be successful in the hereafter A simple hadith which will explain this is 
الدُّنْيَا مَزْرَعَةُ الْآخِرَةُ that this world is a cultivation for the year after. And therefore, Rasul Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to make us understand how farming is done. If you study the nature of farming, the pros and cons of farming, everything is sought, whether it is looked, timings are done properly and accurately, the zameen and the land is checked thoroughly to make sure that the cultivation should go well because of the land. So all these things matters. And then farming is done. Likewise, Allah Azza sent you and I to this planet, to this world. And whatever you and I sow here is what we will reap in the hereafter. Whatever you plant here, what you sow here in the land is what you will reap in the hereafter. Ad-dunya mazra'atul akhirah. Therefore, Sayyidina Uthman Ghani radiyallahu an and many other companions of the Holy Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would cry when they would stand at the grave side of any person. And they would say that if this stage is successful, if a person was kamyab and he was successful in this stage, in alam barzakh in the grave, then this is the first sign that his affairs in the hereafter will be taken care of. In other words, he will be better, he will be fine, he will be safe, if everything is taken care of in the grave. And if nothing goes well there, then there is no expectations on the day of resurrection. There is no expectation for good in the hereafter. Why? Because he failed and flopped the first stage. If the first marhala, the first stage is fine and easy for him, then this is the sign that things thereafter will also be easy for him. And therefore, Rasul Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam strived a lot and he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stressed a lot on these points that we as ummatis and followers should not waste our time heedlessly wandering around here and there. But rather we should put our focus and all our attention on the preps that we need to make for the hereafter. It was for no other reason that Rasul Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would advise his blessed daughter Fatima Zahra radiallahu anha not once not twice, but many times by saying, Oh Fatima, I do not desire or wish for you to enter into Jannah based on family ties, but rather based on your actions, you should enter Jannah. Based on your actions, on your amal, on the good deeds you performed, you should earn paradise and not based on family ties that Muhammad is your father. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is a very valuable lesson here, dear viewers of Madani channel. We are thought to have hope from the mercy of Rasul Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But together with that, we should not linger around so much of hope that we forget to practice that which Allah has made further upon us. We have, of course, these ayat and verses and ahadith are promising and it is for every ummati. But there is a reason why Allah has even created his torment in anger. There is Jahannam which also exists. There is punishment for those who do wrong. The divine promises of Allah. These promises of the atom good that a person does and the reward he will be given for that. And the slightest bad that he does, the wrongs that he does. Do you think he will not be taken to account for that? These are the divine promises of Allah Azza and they will fall into place. The fact that Allah will make our body organs speak on the day of judgment. The fact that Allah Azza will take you and I to account on the day of judgment. The fact that Allah Azza will make us read the book of our lives which is Kiram and Katibin which are writing at this very moment. Now my amal will be given to us in our hands. This is the truth. It will happen. By the hopes that we have, these things cannot be unturned and undone. Allah has promised us, it is upon His mercy that whomsoever He desires to forgive without any accountability, it's His mansha, His wish. He is ghafoor rahim arham rahimeen But together with that, we are His bandas. And Allah has made many things farb upon us. His commandments are there, His hukum and orders are there. Instead of finding His pleasure, we are looking for the pleasures of this world. Instead of making him happy, we are busy making others happy in this world. Allahu Akbar. Instead of working towards the Jannah which Allah has promised the good and the pious, we are working very hard towards that hell for which Allah does not want us to enter into. He wants us to protect ourselves from that hell and he warns us over and again about the torments and punishments 
he had sent to the previous nations. And he warned us by reminding us about death as well. Yeah. He reminded us about death over and again. Why does he say in the Holy Quran Park in Surah Mulk, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim? Alladhi khalaq al-mawt wal-hayat liyabduwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala. Allah Zawajalla speaks about the one who creates life and death only to determine from among you who has more better actions, who performs better actions. Ayyukum ahsanu amala. Whose actions are the best from amongst you. That is why he created Life and death. In fact, death and life. خلق الموت والحياة. الله أكبر. Contemplate and think over this. Reflect over this. Was everything created needlessly? Was there no need and purpose for whatever was created? No. Everything is serving its purpose. From the sun to the stars to the moon to the mountains to the trees and plants and air and everything around us. الله أكبر. Even the objects around us. Everything has a maqsad and purpose and Hazrat Insan has one maqsad as well. And that mission, that focus, that maqsad is simple as this, as Allah Zawajalla says in the Holy Quran Park as well. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ We have been created only for His worship, for us to worship Allah Zawajalla Families, children, wealth, money, business, hardships, good times, bad times, sicknesses, good health, losses of death. All these things are part of life, dear viewers of Madhuri Channel. Crying one day, being happy one day, celebrating one day, and the next day it's a total opposite of that. This world brings a good news to millions of people every day and brings bad news to millions of people daily. This dunya hi aisa hai. It was never anyone's friend and it would never be anyone's friend. It never belonged to any person, nor would it ever belong to any person. From your birth till your death, every action proves to you that you are never going to live here forever. Then why aren't we preparing for death now? After we understood this aspect, dear viewers of Madhuri Channel, let us peep a little and study a little of the words of wisdom, the madani pearls that left the Mubarak tongue of the Holy Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa stressing and emphasizing on these points of preps, preps, preps over and again. Rasul Karim sallallahu alayhi wa said, frequently remember which destroys pleasures. Frequently remember that which destroys the pleasures, the long hopes. Sahaba Ikram asked, Ya Rasulullah, what should we remember frequently? He sallallahu alayhi wa said, remember death. Because the more often you think about death, the more faster it would separate you from the pleasures of this world. Right now I'm thinking about my comfortable bed in my home. Wow. And we all have cozy beds, beautiful, comfortable beds. MashaAllah, alhamdulillah. The pillow is expensive. You have no neck ache and pin ache. And all the stories with the neck and head and all of that. But that place where you and I will be resting until the day of judgment, which is the qabr and grave. How comfortable your pillow will be, how comfortable the sand would be, this depends on your actions and not on where you are buried only. Doesn't mean if you chose a place where the sand is very soft, so therefore your qabr will be very soft. Rasul Karim sallallahu alayhi wa explained this very beautifully by saying both the graves are similar in apparent condition. But one grave could be from amongst the gardens of Jannah. It embraces the person like a mother embraces her child. It's widened for him until wherever he can see. The windows of Jannah are opened upon that person and the cool breeze blows onto him. He is resting untouched without no snakes and scorpions. He is made to rest in that way until the final hour comes, dear viewers of Madani Channel. Whereas, sometimes, the earth calls out to a person, Hey, were you heedless of me? Did you not know that one day you would come into my stomach and I will crush you as I crush people before you? Were you not aware that you walked on my back with arrogance and today you are in my stomach and now I would show you who I am? Were you not warned? That 70 times a day I call out your name wherever you are, that you are to come into me one day. And now that moment has come. Glad tidings if you were a fortunate person. 
otherwise destruction for you for did you not know i am an home i am a home and abode of troubles i am an abode of calamities for people and then the hadith of the grave crushing you into dust the ripe rib ribs will interlock with the left the feet will touch the head and this will continue as a process and the person will be crushed into sand punishment difficulties snakes and scorpions why prepare for death usman ghani radiyallahu an would say if only the reality of the grave is to be apparent to you then you would learn the reality of the grave khaja gharib in awaz would tell his muridin if allah had to reveal to you what's happening inside the grave here you would melt to the ground rasul karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam who is sayyid al ma'sumin the leader of the innocent allah akbar he would often say i used to stop you from visiting the graves but now i would not stop you go and visit because why this is one thing that will extract the love for the world from your hearts it would remind you of your death over and again it would separate you from the luxuries and from the pleasures of this dunya it would remind you to become a better person because you often frequently miss and think about death yaqub alayhi salatu wassalam is allah's beloved nabi and he also met with malk al maut since he was friends with malk al maut and one day he said malk al maut have you come to take my soul he said no i just came to visit he said okay fine oh the angel of death israil alayhi salam when my turn is up yaqub alayhi salam says when my turn is up then send messengers so i could be ready for you he says no problem and listen dear viewers of madani channel one day the angel of death suddenly appears in front of yaqub alayhi salam and then he asked inquired have you come to take my soul and the angel of death replied in the affirmative by saying yes i have come to extract and take your soul yaqub alayhi salatu wassalam said surprisingly but didn't you and i have an agreement didn't you promise me that before coming to me you will send me my messengers i did not receive any message from you that you are coming to me the angel of death then said okay fine should i not remind you and tell you the first messenger you had black hair at once upon a time and the moment these strands turned gray and white this was the first messenger i am closer to you than ever before and you said i never sent you messenger the second messenger is the hunched back after the straight one now you are hunched prior to this you were straight and this was my second messenger after i met you that yaqub alayhi salam i will come to you and i am closer to you and the last one now you can't even stand straight you are weak and thus this was my last messenger that now you should be prepared because any time i would come to you and you said i did not send you any messengers now look at the madani pearls the advice of the angel israil alayhi salam this angel of death allah has appointed this angel as the angel of death and every dying person will meet with this angel he will extract your soul dear viewers of madani channel yaqub ali salatu wasalam heard this and he said yes i had received all these messengers the question is those who are viewing madani channel right now how many of us come up like the gray hair the white hair how many of us think we go to the gym we do exercise we are very strong how many of us think we taking supplements and medication so therefore we are never weak we are always strong but such people who dwell in such misconceptions i often cheated by life because life deceives it's a deceiver this lifetime here has deceived many people in the past kept them busy accumulating the wealth attaining more pleasures chasing the world more and when they realized now i have earned enough money it's time to enjoy this money that money had landed them in the grave and hospitals they spent all their wealth fighting their operations fighting their medical treatments and then many people who have both their legs dangling in the grave still have hope of living after even 80 and 90 all of this is because they do not visit the graveyard it is because of not thinking about death dear viewers of madani channel we have come almost to the end of today's episode and program there are so many ahadith that i would love to mention there are so many narrations dear viewers of madani channel allahu akbar allahu akbar you know from amongst those things dear viewers of madani channel which will most definitely assist us and help us are these parables of the pious predecessors who does not know his eminence 
Hazrat Allama Maulana, who needs no introduction, and he is, of course, a buzurg of the Chishtiya Silsila. Allahu Akbar. Hazrat Sayyidina Khaja Hassan Basri, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Ali. And uh, it has been mentioned about him that one day he was at his doorstep when he seen a girl that was passing by and she was included in a janaza procession. So he followed her to see where she goes. She was crying and she was walking with the janaza and she was saying, hi, hi. You know, what a horrible and terrible day I have never encountered in my life before. Allahu Akbar. In a nutshell, he goes towards her and he places his affectionate hands above her head, advising her as a father and says to her, Hey, Betty, don't ever say these words again. It's not you who never encounter a horrible and a bad moment like this in your life before. Actually, it's your father who never experienced a day like this before in his life. Who died? You or your dad? It is your father who tasted death. So... It's him who never seen a day like this before. Not you, Allahu Akbar. It is the andaz and the unique style of the pious predecessors to rectify um, and correct people, subhanAllah. Therefore, she kept quiet. She made sabr. Others also heard. He continued back to his home. The next morning, he seen the same girl passing by his doorstep. He quickly put on his slippers, his Mubarak chapel, and then he followed her to see where she goes. He's seen that she goes to the cemetery, the Qabristan. She goes to the grave of her father. Whereas this personality, Khaja Hassan Basri, he hid himself behind some trees and bushes to see what does she do right now. Aap ye farmate, aap ye farmare ki she goes to the Qabr and she places her cheeks on the soil of her father's grave. And she embraces the Qabr, she hugs the grave. Or hug karne ke baad, I never heard your salam. Abba, what happened? Why did you not make salam back to me? Allahu Akbar. Until yesterday, when you were hungry, I would give you food to eat. Last night in the grave, who gave you food to eat? Abba Huzur, jab andhera hua karta tha, to me. I would burn the lamp in the grave. Who burned the lamp for you last night? Abba Huzur, aapka badan jab darat karta, to me tel lagati sar pe raat ko, when your head was paining in the grave, who put tail and oil for you upon your body, upon your head? Abba Huzur, aapko jab sardi lagi hogi kabar mein, to aapko kambal kisne udaya hoga? Who gave you kambal and blanket to cover yourself in the grave? Bachi hai, is tara ke baati kar rahi thi. Khaja Hassan Basri Rahmatullah Ali was standing at the behind this tree, you know, listening to every word this girl was saying. And of course, those words penetrated his heart to the extent that it flooded tears in his eyes. He began to cry bitterly. Hearing this girl saying these words, he then went up to her. And then he pampered her and said to her, Betty, now listen attentively to me. Don't ever say these words again. I need to make you understand that alam e barzakh works very differently from this world and kainat. Allahu Akbar. Don't ask your father these questions, but ask your father last night when he was buried, the people who buried him made his face face the Qibla direction. Ask him, is his face in the same direction or have the angels turned his face the other way around? Ask your father that when he was buried, his coffin was pure, clean and intact. Have the angels ripped his coffin apart or oh, his shroud still in the same condition? Ask your father this question that when he was buried, the grave will either crush him or embrace him. Have the grave embraced him like a mother embraces her child or have the grave crushed him like the sinners are crushed? Ask your father these questions. Don't ask him who massaged him and who oiled him and who fed him and who covered him and who quenched his thirst and who on the heater and the fan for him. No. Don't ask your father these questions, oh my daughter, for that world works very differently from this world. Now your father is in need of thawab and reward. Whatever he had saved and invested for his year after is what he will reap right now. Nothing else will come to his aid. Nothing else will assist him. It is only his pious actions and deeds which will assist him. Allahu Akbar. Viewers of Madani channel, it's a long parable. برحال میں اسی جگہ پہ اختتام کرتا ہوں اللہ تعالی ہمیں نیک توفیق و رفیق عطا فرمائے صراط مستقیم پر چلنے کے توفیق عطا فرمائے stay good be good do good and prepare for death at all times may allah azza wa jalla 
فگیو اور سنس آمین بے جاہ نبی الامین صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ علی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اسلام اسلام دو یونیورسل ریلیجن اسلام دو یونیورسل